In this artificial intelligence class, we will see another important topic from fifth unit that is robot hardware. Uh, in this class, we will see the essential characteristics of robot first, after that the important components for robot. So under this important components, we will see the central processing unit, sensors, actuators, end defectors, power supply and the robotic programs. The robotic programs is not actually hardware component, but let us see the importance of this program in robotics. Before the hardware components, first let us see the essential characteristics of robot. Here uh, we will see the features of robot first. The robot will interact in the real world. Okay, we have created more number of robots and of course they will work in the real world. And the changes, that is uh, the robot actions will change the real world. Okay, making changes in the world through their actions. So the actions result will be very accurate. Robot actions will do perfectly and the result will be very accurate when compared to human actions okay and also the robot responding to events in the world okay so whatever task we are giving to the robot and that will be performed very perfectly and accurately uh, by the robot okay so that means the robot perform useful task extend the capabilities of humans so, wherever we cannot do some work perfectly in the place, we can replace the robot, right? So, the critical environment, they reduce our risk. Means, in the critical environment, uh, we can replace the human with the, the robot. The robotic system can be defined as interconnected, interactive, cognitive and physical tools that are able to the first one is perceive the environment using sensors okay the robot system are defined by interconnected devices interactive cognitive and physical tools okay those will be designed by these tools why we are created these uh, robotics to do this particular task the first one is perceive the environment using sensors. So, this is the first characteristics and second one is perform actions by enabling activators. So, by using activators it will do all its task on the environment and third one is reason about events. Okay, why we have to perform a particular event on the environment, right? That is called as reason and the fourth one is make plans using algorithms. Okay, the robot will make its own plan by using algorithms and that will be implemented by using computer programs. So, computer programs will play a vital role in robotics. The first character is sensing. Okay, sensing means perceiving the environment using sensor. The purpose of sensor is used to, to observe the environment, right. So, the robot gets its input by sensing its surroundings through sensors. So, the sensors are nothing but the input, input devices, okay. So, based on the applications, the robot use different sensors that is different input devices otherwise, okay. First one is light sensors and second one is touch and pressure sensors and third one is chemical sensor, fourth one is hearing and sonar sensor. And fifth one is taste sensors. Nowadays people are working with the, the smell also, smell sensors. Okay, this almost come under the chemical sensor, right? Uh, and next the second important characteristics is movement. By using movement only the uh, robot will do its own work on the environment. That is the actions will be performed by using activators on the environment that is called as movement otherwise. Okay, the activators act like hands and legs of the robot to do task on the environment. Okay, so the robot will move by using its own hands and legs and also robot sometimes needs to move around its environment. Okay, so based on the different tasks or different applications, the robot movement will be different and these movements will be done by rolling on wheels, 
walking on legs are probably by trusters. Trusters are nothing but some third party product. It may be a physical product or it may be a software product. By using these things that means by using a wheel or walking on the leg or by using some third party product the robot will move from one place to another place on its own environment. Okay, why the movement is required to do some actions on the environment, right? The third one is intelligence. Okay, because of this intelligence, the robot will work as a smart robot, right? Smartness means the first one is reason about the event. Reason about the event means on a event, the robot need to take some decisions. Okay, so to take some decisions, the reasoning is very important and essential. Okay, and second one is make plans using algorithms. Here, the algorithms are nothing but the machine learning algorithms. So, because of these machine learning algorithms, the event will be implemented. Okay, what it is desired to do will be implemented is only because of the machine learning algorithm, right? robot hardware components. So, in the diagram uh, we can see all the important components which are used in robots. The first one is actuators. Actuators are used to acting on the environment by converting the electrical energy into movement energy, right? Motion energy otherwise. And second one is sensor. Sensor is act as an input device to the robot and third one is electric motor. The electric motor may be AC motor or DC motor for rotational movement we can use those motors and next one is power supply ok. So, the robots are powered by batteries, solar power or hydraulic power ok. So, based on the application we can use any one of the power supply so that the robot will work perfectly. And next one is data cables connecting wires. The data cables and are used to send and receive data and control signals from and to the robot and the wires, electric wires are giving current to the robot. And next one is pneumatic air muscles and piezo motors and ultrasonic motors. These are used in industrial robots. The next very important component is CPU. Uh, the CPU will act as a brain of robot. Okay. So, the robot CPU will collect data from sensors because sensors are nothing but the input devices. Through input devices, the CPU will collect the data and it will process the data and it will analyze the data in terms of reasoning. So, because of this reasoning, it will make some decisions. Okay. So, for all these things we can use the machine learning algorithms right? and so based on the decision the CPU will select the required action okay, which is very much suitable for the current situation and that will be done by actuators. Hence, the CPU will act as a very important role in robotics. The next one is sensors. Sensors will act as eyes and ears of uh, robot through that it will observe the environment, right. There are two types of sensors, first one is passive sensor and second one is active sensors. Passive sensors means that will observe the environment simply that will not cause any changes on the environment or any trouble on the environment, okay. For example, cameras, okay. So, the cameras will simply observe the environment because of camera the environment will not get disturbed, okay. So, the cameras feed visual information to the robot and then the AI process that is the artificial intelligence algorithms called machine vision algorithm or otherwise that will analyze the video footage to recognize a particular object from the footage okay, to guide the robot. So, by using the algorithm uh, the robot will analyze the required object from the environment right. So, those are called as passive sensors that will not cause any trouble on the environment. So, when come to the next type active sensors, 
okay the active sensor send energy to the environment okay so because of this energy the environment will get disturbed for example sonar so the sonar will produce some noise isn't it sound so because of that sound the environment will get disturbed right so this is called as active sensor the different types of sensors which are used in robotics are the sonar sensors that is sound navigation and ranging and lidar sensor that is light detection and ranging and next one is light sensor sounding sensors temperature sensors contact sensors distance sensors proximity sensors pressure sensors and positioning sensors so these are different sensors uh, those are used in robotics okay and some robots can even have touch and taste that is uh, smelling sensors also okay nowadays uh, the people working on this and the robot cpu okay the central processing unit interpret signal from these sensors and adjusts its actions accordingly okay based on the input the actions will be decided by the cpu the next one is actuators the actuators are uh, like hands and legs of robot so by using those actuators it will perform the actions on the environment based on the applications here some small motors will be attached to the robot and by using those robot uh, it can move from one place to another place or it can perform some actions okay and these motors will be attached to the robot directly right to facilitate some movements right to facilitate movement some of the things will be there first one is hydraulic pneumatic and electric so by using those it will perform uh, that is it will do some movement on the environment the simplest robot consists of arms uh, with a tool attached to a particular task so this is this attachment is called as arm okay and it can flex upper arm towards or away okay so this portion will move this direction or this direction both the direction it can move and it can rotate left or right okay this rotation will be left side or right side rotation and uh, the wrist has three degree of freedom okay see first degree second degree third degree so this wrist area has three degree of freedom it can move up and down side to side and it can also rotate because of three degree right and the robot joints have also one two three degree of freedom okay see so because of this three degree freedom it can do all those movement okay these three movements right and the six degree of freedom are required to place an object to place an object so six degree freedoms are one first one second one third one fourth one fifth one sixth one so six degree of freedom are required to place an object so it will act like a hand isn't it so because of that it can place an object at a particular point in particular orientation okay so to place an object it requires six degree of freedom right so more advanced robot may move around the wheels also so that can place the objects from one place to another place right uh, for example the humanoid robots in the last class itself we have seen the humanoid robots that have arms and legs that mimics exactly like human movement the next one is end effectors to complete the given or assigned task the robots are having a special tools are called as effectors or end effectors okay by using those special tools it can complete its assigned work as well as interact with the environment okay so uh, these are called as end effectors some of the example effectors are the industrial robots are having welding torches screwdrivers paint sprayers and etc 
so these are the interchangeable tools we can change that and the mobile robots uh, some of the robots can send to other planet also to analyze and observe the surroundings and the bombs disposal robots and uh, these robots will move one place to another place by using wheels by using wheels okay where the human cannot go in those places right and some robots have universal grippers that mimic the function of human hand okay so by using those grippers it can easily move the object from one place to another place or fix some of the parts to the uh, machinery right the next one is power supply the main power supply for the robots are the electricity when come to electricity there are two types of uh, power supply first one is ac power and second one is dc power the ac power will be given to the stationary robot that means the robot will be fixed into particular place okay so that we can easily give the ac current to that robot and second one is the mobile robot when come to mobile robot we cannot give ac current so that we can give the dc power okay very low power otherwise through battery also we can give power to the robot when come to space robot or satellite robot we have to give only the solar power okay the robot will get the energy from the solar robotic programs robotic programs are not physical component but without robotic program the robot cannot function right so this is an essential part of the robotic system when come to robotics the machine learning algorithms or artificial intelligence algorithms are used to determine what when and how a robot do something okay so what purpose we are using those programs what to do when to do and how to do a particular thing by the robot that will be determined determined by the robotic programs okay when come to simulated environment okay it is possible to use some algorithms especially the reinforcement algorithm okay so the reinforcement algorithm means learning by experience it is a very powerful algorithm and very easy algorithm also uh, for example q learning algorithm that is a part of reinforcement algorithm to learn very quickly when compared to human being suppose if the human being wanted to learn those things means it can have some years to complete the particular task okay but the robot can easily learn all those things by using reinforcement algorithm to complete a particular task uh, so far we have seen the robot hardware from the 50 unit robotics under this topic we have seen up to this the essential characteristics of robot under this the sensing action and intelligence are most important characteristics for doing all those things the robot requires some uh, hardware components and we have seen some of the components apart from that the central processing unit sensors activators end effectors power supply and robotic programs are most essential component for a particular robot right and uh, for more information please go through our textbooks in the next uh, class we will see another important topic from 5th unit thank you